In 2024, it is hard to even imagine that within the last decade, Russia and the US were close to becoming friends. What was this magic elixir that could have improved the Russia-United States relations so greatly? The answer, of course, is this man. We had great meetings, we have a very, very good relationship, and we look forward to spending some very good time together. A lot of very positive things going to come out of the relationship. Russian propaganda all but exploded when Donald Trump became the 45th president of the United States in 2016. This was reaction of Margarita Simonyan, one of the Russia's biggest propagandists and head of Russia today. Okay, then it's decided. Today I'm going to drive around with our flag out of the window and the US flag out of the other. This is my advanced peace offering. The Russian parliament, or State Duma, literally applauded Trump's victory in 2016, as if an event of a governmental magnitude for Russia took place. After all, Putin himself complimented Trump profusely. Он талантливый человек, он очень тонко чувствует, чего ждет от него избиратель. Большим плюсом президента Трампа является то, что он стремится к выполнению своих обещаний. Hi everyone, this is Fake News, the show where we combat Russian state propaganda. My name is Valeria Ratnikova, I'm a journalist at TV Rain, a Russian TV channel in exile. Today we will examine Russia's love affair with Donald Trump. Putin was sure that Trump was going to do something about anti-Russian sanctions and pretty much let him do whatever he wanted without any consequences. But it was not just anticipation of a fruitful international partnership, but a real infatuation on the part of the Russian propaganda, albeit a short-lived one. Spoil alert! It didn't even last the first year of the 45th president's term. Let's dive in. During the US presidential campaign of 2016, Russian propagandists painted a simple picture. American elections are a joke and the results are predetermined, while Trump is an underdog that deserves to be in office. While Trump's victory came as a surprise to everyone, including the Kremlin propagandists, they were quick to start celebrating and praising the president-elect. Экстравагантный, непредсказуемый миллиардер Дональд Джон Трамп становится президентом триумфально, с перевесом из-за которого в штабе Клинтон рыдали. Покажем мы эти кадры. Вопреки мощнейшему давлению американской элиты, Трамп все-таки поселится в американском Белом доме. Трампизм, победа разрушителя, слезы и мат, Трампокалипсис. Ну, такие самые мягкие заголовки, которыми поздравила Дональда Трампа американская и европейская пресса. А часть читателей США даже вышли на улицы под лозунгом «Не мой президент!», что само по себе противоестественно для страны, которая гордится незыблемостью демократической традиции. Most every propaganda outlet and Russian government official extended their congratulations to Trump on his victory, but some also started claiming that it was obvious from the start. Dear Hillary, you don't become the president of United States of America. This is desire of whole of the world, of humanity of Europe, of Russia, Africa, Asia, and most of American citizens. Some of you may not recognize this man, but he has often been named the Russian version of Trump. His name is Vladimir Zhirinovsky. He and Trump not only share similarities in the way they talk, but in their political careers. Zhirinovsky ran for president of Russia six times, starting from the very first Russian presidential election in 1991. In the 90s, he was a legitimate and strong opponent to President Boris Yeltsin, whereas in 2000s and 2010s, he took up the role of the main clown of Russian politics. Yet another parallel with Trump. Here's how Zhirinovsky reacted to the news of Trump becoming the 45th president of the United States. Люди не любят, когда все в одни ворота. Вся пресса, все чиновники, вся элита, все, все результаты известны. Это злит людей. Они в очередь стали с 6 утра, 
чтобы наказать тех, кто лгал все это время. Of course, even Putin didn't shy away from complimenting Trump. Ну посмотрите, что я сказал. Я на ходу сказал, что Трамп яркий человек. А что не яркий? Яркий. Why so defensive? Perhaps Putin was already feeling that something was off. In November of 2017, when asked about his opinion of the Russian meddling with the U.S. elections, Trump said this. As to whether I believe it or not, I am with our agencies, especially as currently constituted. As currently led by fine people, I believe very much in our intelligence agencies. But the relationship soared even before that. Dmitry Kisilov, one of the main Kremlin propagandists, whom we made a separate video about which you should check out, said this in April 2017. Вспыхнуть она может как результат противостояния двух персоналей – Дональда Трампа и Ким Чен Ына. Опасны оба. Но кто опаснее? Если хотите мое мнение, то опаснее Трамп. И вот почему. Первое. Ким Чен Ын готов к переговорам, а Трамп – нет. Now that wasn't very friendly. So Putin had to change his demeanor a little bit while still being quite open. It is really quite pathetic how Putin mentions the anti-Russian campaign in the US and separates it from Trump, while it was during Trump's presidency that the most severe sanctions were imposed against Russia, not counting those that were introduced in 2022. It seems that relations between Trump and Putin deteriorated a little bit, right? Wrong. They went down the drain. To such an extent, in fact, that Putin's propagandists got really personal in their insults of Trump. Penis у Трампа, цитата, меньше среднего, но, цитата, не такой уж маленький. And yet, when it came to Trump saying nice things about Putin, the propagandists instantly began backtracking. In 2019, at a G20 summit in Osaka, Trump not only said that his negotiations with Putin went very well, but called the Russian president a great guy. The words great guy attributed to Putin by Trump became the topic of a heated debate between top Kremlin propagandists Olga Skabeva and Vladimir Solovyov. Friends, in this context, the word great did not mean nice or pleasant, but mighty. There is no reason to be shy, but by great guy he meant nice guy. No more, no less. It's stylistically obvious from the word guy. Well, if make America great again is make America great again, then I won't even discuss the semantics. Besides, Putin is great. No one can argue with that. Wow. I wonder if Taki Carlson and Alex Jones could ever get into such a debate over a short sentence. And what about Trump? How did he feel about Putin and Russia throughout his presidency and in general? We desire to live peacefully and in friendship with Russia and China. We have serious differences with these two nations and must regard them with open eyes. But we are not bound to be adversaries. As we have seen, Putin insists that he only called Trump a bright person. Well, here's what Trump heard. He came out of nowhere two days ago and he said, Trump is brilliant, he's great, he's the leader, he's the leader of the parties. And he said nice things, I didn't know, I never met him, so I didn't know. And he said nice things, all of a sudden I'm hearing things like, oh, isn't it terrible that Putin is saying that? It, that's not terrible, that's good, that's like a good thing, not a bad thing. He can't stand Obama, Obama can't stand him, they're always fighting. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get along, like, with people, you know? There was a tiny little thing that stopped Trump from letting Putin wreak havoc without consequence. The US separation of powers. Nikki Haley, who is now Trump's strongest opponent in the presidential race, was the US ambassador to the UN at the time. And in February 2017, this is how she opened her very first speech. 
I consider it unfortunate that the occasion of my first appearance here is one in which I must condemn the aggressive actions of Russia. The dire situation in eastern Ukraine is one that demands clear and strong condemnation of Russian actions. And as we'd already learned, the anti-Russian sanctions not only stayed in place, but worsened. And did Trump come to the rescue of his dear friend Putin? No, he remained silent. But then an opportunity presented itself. Once the focus shifted from eastern Ukraine to Syria and Putin's support of the regime of Bashar al-Assad, did Trump rush to save Russia's face? See for yourselves. Right now we're not getting along with Russia at all. We may be at an all-time low in terms of uh, relationship with Russia. And Putin, who used to believe in Trump, now lumps him in with the rest of the Washington political elite. Вначале мы когда смотрели, как этот процесс внутри политической борьбы развивается, нам было смешно. На сегодняшний день это не просто грустно, это вызывает у нас озабоченность, потому что до чего еще могут додуматься люди, которые генерируют подобную чушь, подобный бред. Уже трудно себе представить. Все делается это на основе антироссийских разжиганий, антироссийских настроений. Oh no, what happened? But wait, it got worse. As we rebuild America's strength and confidence at home, we are also restoring our strength and standing abroad. Around the world, we face rogue regimes, terrorist groups, and rivals like China and Russia that challenge our interests, our economy, and our values. To make matters worse, Trump announced that the United States was withdrawing from the INF, the nuclear disarmament treaty put in place by Reagan and Gorbachev. This was Trump's reasoning. Decades ago, the United States entered into a treaty with Russia in which we agreed to limit and reduce our missile capability. While we followed the agreement and the rules to the letter, Russia repeatedly violated its terms. It's been going on for many years. And how do you think a mature, for example, Russian government responds? Of course, by saying, oh, you withdraw? Well, guess what? Then I withdraw. You might be wondering, why would Trump personally change his rhetoric? I mean, even with Congress pushing for anti-Russian policies, he could have stayed consistent and supported Russia and Putin, at least verbally, if not legally. But the reason was quite prosaic. Trump was unbelievably scared of the investigation of his collusion with Russia during the 2016 presidential campaign. The Mueller investigation showed that there were no signs of Trump's campaign actually coordinating with the Russian propagandists and hacker attacks. I never worked for Russia, and you know that answer better than anybody. I never worked for Russia. Not only did I never work for Russia, I think it's a disgrace that you even asked that question, because it's a whole big fat hoax. It's just a hoax. Yet again, why so defensive? There was no collusion with Russia, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There was no collusion with Russia. There was no obstruction and none whatsoever. Fast forward to today and the relationship between Putin and Trump looks like none of this even happened. Look at how Putin reacted to legal cases against Trump. То, что касается преследования Трампа, ну это, конечно, для нас то, что происходит в сегодняшних условиях, на мой взгляд, это хорошо. Почему? Потому что это показывает всю гнилость американской политической системы, которая не может претендовать на то, чтобы учить других демократии. Projection is Putin's greatest strength, but Trump was also reciprocal. I want to ask you about something President Putin said about you this week. I don't know if you've seen it. This was very recent. President Putin said, quote, We surely hear that Mr. Trump says he will resolve all burning issues within several days, including the Ukrainian crisis. We cannot help but feel happy about it. What do you well, make of I that? Do you welcome well, his support? I like that he said that because that means what I'm saying is right. Is the bromance back on? Well, not exactly. 
take a look at what Trump said when Putin invaded Ukraine. The problem is not that Putin is smart, which of course he's smart, but the real problem is that our leaders are dumb. <laughs> dumb. So dumb. And they so far allowed him to get away with this travesty and assault on humanity. That's what it is. This is an assault on humanity. So sad. But the reality for Putin is even sadder. The reason why he and his propagandists seem to have forgotten how badly their love affair with Trump ended the first time around is because they are desperate. Their only hope is that Trump becomes president again in 2024. Trump has shown that the second his popularity is at stake, he will sell anyone out. So the fact that Putin is hopeful that he becomes president of the US again and that this will be beneficial for the Kremlin's regime is really quite pathetic. But what do you think? Is there maybe still a chance that the bromance could be rekindled? Let's hope not, but still, let us know what you think in the comments. This has been Fake News, the show where we combat Russian propaganda. If you would like to support free and honest journalism, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. My name is Valeria Ratnikova, and I will see you next time for more insanity.